five in time splendor, oil on linen, 20 by 20 inches, with artist made frame. In Byzantine splendor, I find Tyrian purple, gilded reliquaries, saints with eyes that are not quite right, a ruling class that didn't speak the tongue of its own people, these finely painted things that have admired on chapel walls and from behind museum glass. Echoes of history blend together like the bands in a suminagashi pattern, overlapping until their origins become indiscernible. I view painting as a vehicle for the exploration of human psychology. There is a riddle in every art material. You must figure out how to compress nature into a very narrow space of color and reflection. Hello, I'm celebrating the completion of a painting today. This is always a really exciting achievement. There are so many pieces that go on in an artist's life and in the studio, and finally bringing something to completion like this is really special. This is a painting called Byzantine Splendor, and it is approximately 20 by 20 inches, including the frame, which I've made myself. Let's talk about the frame first. This is just a mixture of pink. Here's another lighter one. I'm using titanium white here. This is a gilded metal leaf. I love the way this gives a beautiful shine and light. Over here I've got a little bit of red lead mixed in with cadmium for these touches of red light. Prussian blue for this really special, almost Egyptian sarcophagi looking image. Chromium oxide green in some of the corners here. And some more beautiful hues taken from the painting itself. I've gone with a really simple profile so that attention can be drawn to the abstract geometric pattern within. I'm inspired here by Art Nouveau, as well as ancient Greek and Egyptian paintings on sarcophagi. It was quite common to see fine portraits like this, for example, made on linen and placed on top of the sarcophagi. I remember seeing a number of these in Berlin in person, and also the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They were quite striking. This is another very common Greek molding here. I love to use this to kind of tie my work back to classical antiquity. It also makes it easier to pick the painting up when you're transporting it, uh, it especially with bigger paintings. Here's my signature in the corner. It says T-O and my little rectangular chop. I tend to put my signatures in the corners and they are not necessarily always on the left bottom corner. They do move around a bit, but in this case I thought that this corner was just uh, the most open and blended the nicest with this kind of vermilion touch of red, which does match the lips and takes us into the portrait. One of the most striking features of the portrait, I believe, are the eyes. I like to do a lot of detail on the eyes when I make a painting. And if I can, I always like to bring out the white of the eye um, on one side, just to give a little bit of a difference and show a little bit of expression 
often people's faces aren't quite symmetrical and I don't necessarily believe in uh, enforcing this uh, perceived symmetry that we all seem to want to see. Um, I think it does flatten personality out a little bit, so I don't do that in my work that often. There's some lovely silk bonnet detailing around the sides with flowers. And I just love painting ivory, uh, especially anything with a satin sheen. It has a way of reflecting color from the picture all around. And you can tell that this piece was made in natural light because there's a lot of blue highlights seen throughout the ribbons as well as the skin tones, such as here on the side of the face, the chin, on the sides of the ribbons, and the background itself. I didn't make this painting intending to call it Byzantine Splendor, but I have been on a lot of world travels around art museums in some of the bigger cities of the world. And um, I've been to Ravenna in Italy. And I, even though I haven't been to Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, I would love to go, but I've admired a lot of the, the paintings by John Singer Sargent of the church and, uh, enjoyed some history programs and it's always fascinated me so I like to invoke different eras of art whenever I can in my own work it's it's not even so much of a choice it's just something that happened by accident actually I was just at the National Gallery of Art the other day and I wandered into the Byzantine room and it's just before the early Italian Renaissance paintings and they have a lot of front-on portraits of the Madonna and Child and, and other saints and uh, it's kind of struck me that that's what I should call my painting because I saw a lot of similarities in the Fontaine pose, the eyes, and the sense of kind of otherworldliness that was uh, captured there. They really are quite interesting paintings um, and of course with, with the gold in the frame it just kind of lended itself to that really a quite nice museum, the National Gallery of Art, if you get a chance to go in DC. So there you go, this is, this is done. I, an ironic story to tell about this painting, it was actually destined for a 12 by 12 show, is what they call it, and that would have been the original dimensions of this panel. This is a dye bond panel, and it is covered with linen, a very smooth portrait weave linen, just like those Fayum portraits in the sarcophagi. Um, and in this case, uh, the painting was supposed to be painted really quickly and sent off to a show and uh, sold for under a thousand dollars as a kind of maybe lead up to the holiday kind of sale, a big group show. And I said, yes, I can do it. And so I got to work on it and it just ended up taking more and more time. I thought if I just do a, a simple front on portrait, I should be able to get that done. And, and um, lately my work's been taking on a, a new phase where I'm going back to some of my earlier roots from the academic kind of atelier painting world and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to do a lot more blending and, and a lot more layering and trying to push the skill level forward. So of course this took a lot of time and I, I took breaks in between each layer and I did a lot of glazing and texture work and I, I didn't want it to look like a sketch. I wanted it to look like it was something that had been worked on and was a very fine thing. And so the other thing that the show wanted me to do was to send the painting unframed um, and I just didn't think that the painting should be sent unframed. Once I thought, one thing I thought it was kind of unsafe because this is a beautiful dye bond panel uh, made by Artifacts Art in California and dye bond is very rigid and it doesn't expand or contract but the one downside dye bond has is that you do not want to ding it or puncture it 
and it can be very hard to flatten it out again. And so um, I decided that I definitely wanted to get it framed. And I had two choices. I could put a gold frame on it. Um, and I kind of went for just coming up with my own pattern. Um, I've made a couple of these frames so far. They are inspired by, as I said before, Art Nouveau, Greek, um, Egyptian sarf sarcophagi and wall paintings, but they are also inspired by contemporary art. A couple years ago, I was teaching a workshop in Princeton and I was staying at the Nassau Inn and I received a nice giant book of Barnett Newman because it was my birthday. And I remember sitting beside this beautiful fireplace in the inn um, with, with a cup of tea on a nice red leather couch, uh, reading two books. I had a giant book of Hieronymus Bosch. Uh, actually, it wasn't Hieronymus Bosch. It was post. It was, it was Peter Bruegel. So it was a new big book of Peter Bruegel. And then on the other side, I had a Barnett Newman book. These were both huge coffee table books. And I just loved the juxtaposition, how different they were. And I was really happy to be um, just sitting there and imbibing art and tea in between teaching a workshop. And it was a great time. And yeah, I, I'm kind of curious, um, Rothko as well. I'm, I'm, I'm curious um, about paintings by Mark Rothko and Barnett Newman, just these kinds of Almost, almost this could be a painting of, of one of theirs, just, just two or three sh abstract shapes. And I liked this idea of just uh, taking up a whole canvas to just balance two colors. And I decided to do that in my frames. Um, so those are a few of the inspirations I can think of. There's, there's probably a lot more. It's hard to see where art comes from, but since we're we're talking about it here, I'm just gonna try to bring all the different associations I can out of my head. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this piece. I love the rendering on the portrait. I think I'm definitely gonna be doing more of that. And I, I definitely credit a lot of that to the smooth surface that I was working on. It's possible to do this on a rougher weave canvas, but not easy. Whereas a, a very fine um, panel like this gives you a lot of um, rendering uh, ability. So yeah, very pleased with this little piece and um, looking forward to making a bigger frame soon um, in a similar style and just uh, keep going and keep finishing more works in this series. So thank you for watching and see you on the next uh, edition when I finish my next piece. Sayonara. Farewell.